Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the first day of the rest of your life. Because <laughs> every day is your birthday if you choose to celebrate life. I thought I'd give you this nice view that I've just run up from um, Ilfracombe down there. And I thought I'd zoom in as well because sometimes you'll see me down on the harbour side. And I just realised that I could see the harbour side from here. There we go. If you see that little pointy up thing uh, just in the middle, right in the middle of the screen there. That is the uh, Damien Hurst statue right down on the harbour at Ilfracombe. Um, so there you go, there you have it. And uh, I've just run up from, well, from down here really, um, to here. And today is the first day of the rest of my life. Hurrah! Happy birthday, everybody. Hope you're well. Um, I'm going to give you that view in the background in a second because I'm going to come around here because I've just found blackberry bushes here. <laughs> Um, and this is a bit of a defence from the wind, these, uh, these bushes over here, so hopefully uh, the wind isn't going to be too big while I'm talking to you. I'm going to have to hold it though, which is slightly frustrating, couldn't find anywhere to prop it up. Um, but there you go, we are going to talk about suffering being a choice today, um, and uh, habits, uh, we're going to talk about habits uh, and, and choices and shoulds to a certain extent, because I was having a chat uh, on via email, replying to an email this morning uh, with my friend Joe Happiness Howarth. Um, and uh, I found myself saying shoulds and I'm thinking hmm, that's an interesting topic let's talk about that today and then on the way up here I was listening to the Blinkist book of the day from a couple of days ago called Sovereign Self and it was all about uh, the Vedas and um, there was meditation in there and uh, understanding desires and how to overcome these things and I sorts of a whole bunch of things really basically um, I love doing this learning things and learning new things uh, the actual book of the day today is uh, about finishing the things you do or something like that. Um, it's all about uh, setting goals and uh, and actually finishing the stuff that you say you're going to do. Um, so when I do this, <laughs> what's the one thing you're going to do today? <laughs> yeah, uh, I haven't done a particularly good job of finishing things. Um, it's interesting actually the wind, I'm just looking up here. Um, just flip the camera around for a second. Uh, you can see the wind blowing the the, the the grass and you can see everything everything as you're up here because the wind is off the sea. Everything is blown sort of this general direction. Uh, so everything's sort of bent over. It's it's kind of kind of funky. Hello, good morning viewers by the way. We're gonna start off by saying happy birthday to a few people though because we've got a bunch of people from today and from yesterday. Do that really quickly though, just gonna run through them. Um although a special quick extra special one for Helen um, Helen Mottram, actually I've got Helen Eid written down here but Helen Mottram uh, her wedding anniversary today um, normally this time of year, we go and have drinks and have a meal at the uh, the Indian restaurant in Cheltenham to celebrate that wedding anniversary. It's an unusual thing. Um, but this year, sadly, I am down here in Ilfracombe, um, two and a half hours drive away, so I, I'm not going to be able to make it. So hope you have an amazing day, Helen um, and Tristan, of course, Tristan Mottram, um, and everybody else who uh, does show up to that thing <laughs> tonight, hopefully. Um, uh, yes, so anyway, happy birthdays for today to um, Justine McCoughlin, of course. Um, or he said happy birthday to her in person. Uh, Ruby, Daniel, Brigitte, 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 I'm guessing because it's French. Uh, Joe, Moaz, uh, Jessica, uh, Jackie, Emily, uh, Tamsin, and Fiona. <laughs> happy birthday to all of you people today. I hope you're having a lovely birthday today. Uh, and from yesterday, uh, Sunday, uh, Luca, Josh, Katie, Andrew, Rob, Helena, Joe, and Eve. That's an interesting second name you have, a middle name you have there, Eve. I didn't know that one. That's quite an interesting one. Um, so that's it. Happy birthday to all of you people. Hope you have an amazing uh, Monday and Sunday you had, had yesterday. So talking about suffering being a choice today, um, and it really is a choice because whilst you have, I mean, this, is, this comes back to the, the quote I use regularly, which is um, the Jack Sparrow one, which is, uh, the problem is not the problem. The problem is how you react to the problem. I'm not sure that's an exact quote, but it's something along those lines. Uh, the problem is, is your attitude towards the problem, actually. The problem is not the problem. The problem is your attitude towards the problem is, <laughs> is the actual problem. Um, and that's true enough, um, because you have a problem, something happens to you, um, things do happen to you that you have no specific control over. Um, quite often, though, you have much more control than you might think uh, over the things that do happen to you, but we'll come on to that in a second. Um, but generally speaking, something happens to you, you think, you, at least you very think you don't have any control over it. Um, you know, somebody bashes into the back of you in your car, for example, you go, I don't know, that was them, they smashed into me. Um, uh, but uh, but how you react to that uh, is is the important thing. Is do you do you react with anger and getting upset and uh, and shouting and screaming, or do you act with calm, compassion, 
what, what happened? Were you distracted? Were, you know, you know, is there something going on in your life that, that meant you crashed into the back of me? Because getting angry about it makes no difference at all. Uh, you just got to collect their insurance details and move on and crack on with the rest of your life. Um, uh, and don't carry that negativity forward for the rest of the day as well, because you can just like beat yourself up about it. You tell people the story of how this, this, this idiot crashed into the back of me and it was so stupid because uh, it ruined my day. You know? And then you talk about this stuff for ages and then that story then becomes part of your identity going forward for years and years and years. Um, oh, there's this one time when this really bad thing happened to me and I just tell this story all over again. Yes, I know, I know. But you never remember the good stuff. You, you never rem- Of course, you never remember the times when you drove along that same stretch of road and nobody crashed into you. <laughs> or you stopped at those traffic lights and nobody crashed into you. You went across that roundabout and nobody crashed into you. <laughs> um, don't remember any of those. Don't tell those stories, do you? No, because those are just boring stories, right? Uh, but the one when somebody smashed into you, that's an interesting story. But of course, what happens is it cements inside you the idea that things happen to you that are out of, contr- out of your control and that negative things happen to you that are out of, con- out of your control. So the more times you tell these negative stories, the more your brain wires into your brain that these things negatively happen to you. So then when somebody says to you, oh, so, um, are you a generally a negative person or a positive person? I they wouldn't phrase it like that. They might say... Um, Tell me about some good stuff that's happened in your life. And then you say, oh, nothing ever happens good in my life. And you go, well, there must be some good things that happen in your life. No, no, never happens at all. Um, and you go, and then they say, oh, well, what do you mean? And you say, well, there's this bad thing that happened and this bad thing. And of course, you've told these stories so many times that you recognise that this is, you know, that's, that's what you think is your life. You forget about all the good stuff that happened in your life. Um, I always talk about this as well when, when I go, whenever I see a uh, lottery, uh, not lottery, um, raffles. Um, you sort of have these sort of community raffles and you have a little raffle book and you buy raffles uh, and then they give out a whole bunch of prizes at the end of the day. And sometimes they give out like hundreds of prizes and it's, it's, it gets a little bit ridiculous sometimes. Um, but then you get these people who say, oh, I never win anything at a raffle. <laughs> and then they get picked up and they go up to collect their prize. And then when they come back down to sit down, I say, and I, I you know, depending on how well I know them, obviously, because um, <laughs> it's a bit of a harsh thing to say. You say, well, you can never say that you never win a, lot- a, a raffle ever again. So whenever you go to a raffle, you can't say that you never win a raffle because now you have won a raffle. Uh, but of course, the problem is that they probably won't recognise, won't remember that one time they did win the raffle because in their brain, they've told this story, I never win raffles. The next time they go to a raffle, uh, they'll probably say, oh, I never win raffles. E- even though the last time they went to a raffle, they won a raffle. <laughs> Um, and even if they did remember that one last time when they went to this raffle, if they don't win at that raffle, that becomes the story that they take forward. So then they go to the next raffle and they go, oh, I never win at raffles. Yeah, because the last time I went to a raffle, I didn't win anything there either. So, you know, phew, I don't win any raffles at all. Yeah, but two raffles ago, you did win something. So um, <laughs> so it's not true that you don't, you never win raffles. Um, and it's these kind of um, uh, uh, words that we use, never, always, uh, in our lives that tend to then make us feel like this suffering is not a choice um that we don't have a choice over these things and that that these things just keep happening to us and everything's negative in our lives because our brains are wired to look for negative they look to try and keep us safe they are designed to try to look for danger and and difficulties uh, in order to try and keep us safe Um, but we have to actively work to to find the opposite things in our lives to move us forward so it is a choice Um, we were saying before about somebody crashing in the back of your car uh, that wasn't your choice. Well, it kind of was <laughs> because um, you made a choice to leave your house at that particular time. You made a choice to to drive that particular route. Uh, you made a choice to stop at that you know, stop at that orange light instead of going through when it was orange. And I don't know. Um, uh, you, you decided to drive at that particular type of that type particular speed uh, along that particular road, which then meant that you stopped at the traffic lights. Um, you know, I, you know, any number of millions of things have happened happened in your life to get you to that very point where that person behind you then crashed into the back of you. Um, and it could have been that you overtook somebody, and then somebody else, the person behind you, got crashed into. So whilst you don't have direct choices, <laughs> the things that happened in your life up till that point led to that thing happening to you. Maybe not you through choice, but the the choices that you made got you to the point where you were you were sitting in that car at that time at that spot where this other person crashed into the back of you. Um, so it's all good fun. Good morning, Louise. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, happy happy birthday to you because welcome to the first of the re- re- rest of the day. Uh, well, well, first day of the rest of your life. Anyway, so there you go. So that's that's basically all about it. This suffering is a choice, and, and it's a reason it's a choice is because you you can choose whether or not you want to keep telling yourself the same stories over and over, you know, the negative stories of your life, or you can choose to tell yourself the positive stories of your life. And if you want to process 
to help you do that, to help you cement that in using neuropsychology, I have a process called my Create Happy Process. Um, let me know if you want to have, that, have, have access to that. Uh, it's a PDF download. Uh, it's going to be some videos uh, that accompany it as well to explain how it all works. Um, I haven't recorded those yet. Um, <laughs> that's one of the jobs I do, do today or tomorrow. Um, so let me know about that. Uh, and that can help you decide, help you recognize that, your, that, that any suffering that you have in your life is a choice and that you can choose not to. Um, now, I was talking earlier about shoulds. <laughs> I should do this and I should do that. Um, that's you shoulding all over yourself. Um, but you shouldn't feel that way. Uh, and I know I recognize the word, use the word should just there. You choose what you choose. You choose how you want to live your life. Uh, you choose whether you want to do something or whether you not want to do something. Whenever you say, oh, I should do this, that's somebody else's decisions about what you should or shouldn't do. Uh, that's somebody else's decision. They're, they're saying, this is what you should do. And you're taking that on board and saying, oh, I should do this because other people said this is what I should do or other people say this is the right thing to do or other people have this this idea of, of what to do and when to do it what I don't know depends on what the thing is you're talking about but just have a think about whenever you say should is it really my choice and if it is my choice then just go and do it there, there's no shoulding about it <laughs> you know if it's something you want to do just go and do it don't say oh I should do this because that feels like it's somebody else's choice it feels like it's not you you don't want to do this but you feel like you should do this. Um, and if you don't feel like you want to do this thing, don't do it. <laughs> Obviously within reason. Um, but, uh, but just have a think about, whenever you say to yourself, oh, I should do this, think about, is it my choice or is it somebody else's choice that's led me to do that thing? Um, because then again, it's the same thing about the suffering. Um, you're, if you're suffering because you're shoulding to yourself, you're shoulding all over yourself, <laughs> why are you doing that? Make it a choice. Take back the power, take back the control um, and decide what you're going to decide and choose what you're going to choose. Right, that's all from me to now. I did say in here about um, morning, Cindy. Cindy, Cindy lives just there. <laughs> Hello, Cindy. There you go. There, where are you? Where are you? There. <laughs> I'm up on the hill. Up the. Uh, you can probably look out your window and see the the, the radio mast there, Cindy. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> I'm up there. <laughs> I'm about to run back home. Um, uh, I don't know how long I've been running for. Uh, a couple of hours now, probably. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, habits versus desires. Um, good versus bad and helpful versus unhelpful. I will do that in a future text, future message. Um, but uh, all of these things are part of my program. So if you're interested in my program, let me know and I'll get you on the program and we can help you unwind your head and get you thinking um, about the right things to do, uh, the right way to think so that you're in control of your thoughts, your feelings, uh, your emotions. Uh, that's what I do is I teach people how to get off the antidepressants, never struggle with depression or anxiety ever again because you become fully in control of your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions. Um, that's what I do. That's what I teach you how to do. So let me know if you're interested in any of that. Bye for now, though. Love you all. Um, let me just give you the, the heart, Sega heart. Mwah, take care. Have a lovely Monday. I will see you tomorrow, Tuesday morning, somewhere. I have no idea. Probably down by the harbour somewhere. Where's the harbour? Where's the harbour? Harbour is over there somewhere. I showed you at the beginning of the video. I'll be down there probably tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>